check this out. We're in Blender. We're going to add this Hello World panel down here. And if you hit that Add Cone button, you'll see it works just as expected. Delete the cone. Over here, you can see on the View 3D panel, we also have an Add Cone button. Hit Add Cone, that works just the same. And in the Video Editing area, we have a Greetings panel there too, and you can add a scene. And if I have a scene, click the button, it works. Let's get into how that's done. How to add a custom button or panel in Blender. So what are we talking about today? Well, if you prefer to read it, just keep in mind there's a blog post on GitHub. I'll leave a link in the description. But we're going to go through some background. How do we run arbitrary code in Blender, which will be essential as we develop our little plugin? And what are the basics of Blender operators? What are they and why are they important? Then we'll start adding some panels. We're gonna add a hello world panel, the simplest possible panel we can add. We will add a button to that panel that does something. We will look at where the panel shows up and that is defined by space, region, and context. We will then add a panel to view 3D instead of the original one, which was in properties. And we'll also add one to the video sequencer. Finally, we'll talk about add-ons. We can rewrite our interactive script as an add-on that you can install, and then we'll actually go ahead and install it. But what's the point of any of this? Well. This is a page key, so we're trying to take back tech. What's that mean? Tech is definitely a good thing. We want to solve a problem once and save the time and effort next time. Solve a bigger problem, repeat. That's how we make uh, some good technological progress in the world. Big companies are also good because they developed all this technology, like the laptop that I'm on and your smartphone in your pocket. Things we could only dream of a century ago. They would seem like magic if we went back in time and showed it to them. But those big companies have made us dependent on them, which could potentially be bad, not necessarily, but it puts most of our life outside of our locus of control. We can't necessarily control exactly what's displayed on our smartphone. We might get new apps installed with new UIs we didn't ask for, and we have no say in the matter. So what's the solution? Well, we break down the existing tech, which is a very tall stack of abstraction that's very complicated. We rebuild it, and we do our best to understand the full stack from top to bottom. This gives us the freedom to manage our own tech, which is good. The tools to do all this are already out there, but they're hard to find and hard to use. So we need to improve our ability to explain things to each other, have better documentation, all that. This channel is all about learning to manage our own tech to gain independence. So how do we run arbitrary code in Blender? When I was getting started, I wasn't quite sure how to run scripts. It's actually very simple. There are four steps. We're going to go through them right now, and I won't say them out loud. We're just going to see them, but feel free to pause if you want to read this. All right, so to run arbitrary code in Blender, open up Blender, click any of the templates that they have here. I'll just use general. And if you don't have a scripting tab already for the perspective you chose, you can go to general scripting and that will add one for you. Either way, go over to that scripting tab and then we have this files area and you have the 3D perspective over here. Down here, this is an interactive view, which we'll see more of soon, but it wasn't clear to me at first. You just hit new and you get a text file. Then we can put in this little one-liner for an example script, go to run script, or you can use alt P, which I'll hit now. And you can see we get a Taurus in the 3D view. So our code ran. So if you're gonna be customizing Blender like this, one of the most important concepts you need to understand is operators. What's the point of them? Well, you can't add a button with an arbitrary listener. You can't have an on-click listener for your button. The only way to add a button is to add an operator to the UI. They are synonymous in terms of making UIs. Let's just make it clear that you already use operators. Whenever you add a cube or modify anything in Blender, basically, you are using operators. I'll show you how to see operators and get a feel for what they are and what they're doing. We're gonna go through the scripting tab, which shows operators invoked as you do things in Blender, which is pretty cool. You can also type bpy.ops and hit tab to see all of the potential options for operators. And there is an operator cheat sheet, which is a little esoteric, but I'll show you how to enable it and use it to get a feel for all of the operators that exist in Blender. So the first way to interact with and get started with operators is you can see down here, you have some things being printed as you do things. So if I delete a Taurus, you can actually see that it calls bpy.ops.object.delete. And that is an operator that just got invoked. If I rotate, you can see it prints a whole bunch of stuff about how I just rotated that object. If I hit G and start sliding it around and then I click, it transformed. So you can see all these operators being invoked as you do things right down here. The second way to check it out, as I alluded to before, you can do bpy dot ops dot in this little code immediate window and hit tab and it shows all the options so if i want to see what is inside of this paint one then i just keep typing paint dot tab and i can go to vertex paint tab 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 just hit tab a lot and then once you get into the method it tells you even which keyword arguments to use or you can just close it and hit enter see what happens of course this is the wrong context to be doing vertex painting but you get the idea the third thing is the operator cheat sheet, 
which first you have to go into preferences and click developer extras. Make sure that box is checked. Once you do that, you can go to help operator cheat sheet. It looks like nothing happens, but if we go back to the scripting tab into our text view here, in our drop down, we have text, which is the thing we were just messing with, but we have a new entry, operator list.txt, and you can see every single operator that Blender knows about, over 2,000 of them, and they're separated dot ops dot action dot ops dot enum by a little line break to make it a little easier to see. So maybe overwhelming, but maybe kind of comforting that you can see all of them in one place like that. Pretty cool. Now let's get into the fun part. How do we add a panel? How do we make something show up on the screen that wasn't there before? Here's the hello world of panels. It's as simple as it gets. First of all, everything has to import BPy, which is the Blender Python bindings that allow you to interface with Blender at all. Then we'll create a class that extends bpy.types.panel, and we have to provide a certain number of fields. First, we give it an ID, which uniquely identifies it. There is a convention for this ID that I did not show here, but it didn't seem to make a difference, so you can look into that on your own if you want. We give it a label, which is like the title of this little panel. And then we have space, region, and context, which define where in the Blender UI gets mounted so that you can see it. We'll talk in more detail about that soon. Then we have this draw method that we have to override and we're given a context and self and all we have to do is call layout.label to add a label. Then finally at the very bottom, we use the register class utility function to register this panel which causes it to be displayed in Blender. So let's paste this in and see what it does. So if we copy and paste our hello world panel, the simplest possible panel, and we run the script, then we can go into the object properties here and you can see hello world the panel name and the label displayed. So it worked. So the panel's great and all, it looks very pretty, but it doesn't do anything. How do we make it do something? We're gonna add a button. Here's the code, it's almost exactly the same as before. You'll notice the ID is the same. When you run this, it won't cause an error. It will actually update your panel in place. So this is nice if you're iterating on something. You can just keep running it over and over to see the updates. The only new line is right here where we're adding an operator. So we added a label before, now we're adding an operator. And we're going to use a mesh primitive cone add built-in operator. And then the text of the button is going to be add cone. And if you were to type bpy.ops.mesh.primitivecone add, you can run it from the script immediate window, as we'll see. So let's check that out. So if we upgrade our panel from before and keep everything the same, but we add this layout operator line, and then we run the script again, keep an eye on the hello world down here, run script, and wow, there's a button. What if we hit that button? We click it, there's the cone. So it worked as expected. Okay, so where are we displaying this panel? Space, region, and context seem to be what defines where it actually gets placed in the Blender UI. So we have BL space type, region type, and context. Each of these has an associated docs page with them, which we can quickly look at. And these two have pretty decent explanations. This one actually has a to-do where they haven't explained it yet, but we have to infer as best we can from good old context clues. So we'll look at those docs and we will show an error when you use the wrong combination of these properties together. It actually throws a, that's not valid type of error. So if we quickly page through the docs, here's what it looks like. You can see the various options for space type view 3D image editor, node editor, sequence editor. Some of these are probably familiar if you've played around with the different views in Blender. Over in region type, the only one that I've seen used is UI and maybe header and window. The rest, I don't know what they're for, but you can do your own research there. Finally, panel has context in its documentation. And you can see there's a to-do here to explain this better. So I don't know if I'm the person to do that. I guess I'll leave that to the Blender folks. Let's see, practically speaking, what happens if we use the wrong combination of these types. So if we keep everything the same on the panel with the button, except change the region type to UI, run the script, you get an error that says region not found in space type. So that doesn't work. Clearly properties, UI, that's a bad combination. Beyond that, I couldn't tell you the difference. Okay, now that we know all these lessons, let's go back, do something concrete. We're gonna add a panel to the view 3D area. And this is looking very similar. We change the ID. You actually do get an error when you change the context around a lot. So since we're in a different part of the UI, it's gonna get mad if we don't change this piece. It's gonna say it's already used. Anyway, we've added something new, the category, and you'll see where that shows up in the UI in just a moment. I tweaked the label, but the big change here is the space type has changed from properties to view 3D, and the region type has changed to UI. I've also commented out context because it doesn't seem to be needed when you're in the UI region, or maybe it's the view 3D space, I'm not sure. Down here, nothing has changed for our draw function or our registration. So let's see what this does. 
All right, this time let's do something in the view 3D area. So I'm gonna give it a unique ID here. You can change the label. The space type will be view 3D. Keep it as UI and we actually don't need this context. Just to illustrate that, I'll comment it out. And we can add some custom text for the label. The operator I'll keep the same and of course the register class will stay the same. Run the script. And now if you look over here on the side panel, you see a misc. Under misc, here's our custom panel. So in the layout area, you can see this maybe a little more clearly where you have item, tool, view, and you have this miscellaneous panel with our working button. If we wanna change that misc piece, all we have to do is add a category and then we rerun our script and you can see my category comes up. So view 3D is cool, but what if you wanna do some video editing? Well, we'll upgrade our panel to work for the video sequencer now. We're gonna give it a unique ID, otherwise it'll get mad because you have two panels with the same ID in different contexts, one in view 3D, one in the video sequence editor. The second thing we'll change is this space type needs to become sequence editor. And down here we can add an operator that is specific to video editing and is appropriate in that context. In this case, we'll use scene strip add. That's a typo and now it's fixed. Okay, if we paste in our VSC snippet here, all we changed is the sequence editor space type and we added a more appropriate operator. If we run this script, we can go over to the video editing tab and our custom panel has this add scene button. It prompts us for a scene and adds it. All right, so once you get down exactly what you want your script to be doing, how you want the panel to look, you're not gonna wanna go diving into the code all the time and pasting things into the script window. How can we re rewrite our script as an add-on that you can install so you don't have to worry about the details? We only have to make a few tweaks to do that. We need to add BL info, which is metadata for your plugin slash add-on. And we need two methods, register and unregister, which Blender calls when you install and uninstall the add-on. Then we'll add a main method so we can still run in scripting if we need to do some debugging later. So I pasted this in from the blog article on GitHub. You can see it's almost exactly the same for the panel piece. And we've added three new things. First of all, BL info is a special name where we put our metadata. So you give it a name. You have a minimum Blender version. You want to make this as early as possible so that people can use it even if they don't have the latest Blender and category object. Two methods, register and unregister, these are called by Blender. So we're going to give this, this we were calling every single time we ran our script, and this is just a cleanup. It's the inverse of this guy. And then we still want to be able to run this through the script panel if we want to. So we can just call register ourselves if the name is main. So that means when we go to run script, it does exactly what it did before we have this in the right format to be an add-on. Now, how do we install our custom add-on? It's not too hard, it's just four steps. We have to save our script as a PY file, close and reopen Blender. This will clear out all the garbage that we did as we were just testing things out. And then we'll install the add-on. I won't go through these steps because we're about to see them and just make sure it works. Okay, so what we can do next is in this text view, go to save as, go somewhere that you'll remember on your file system, and then you can give it a name such as my underscore add-on dot pi. Make sure you use underscores instead of hyphens because Python might get mad if you don't. Then hit save as. Now let's close out Blender to get rid of all these custom panels we ran from this panel. Close it out, reopen it fresh and click general. Go to edit, preferences, add-ons. We'll click install, browse to the .py file we just saved, select it and hit install add-on. We'll check the box to enable it. Now if we close it and go to video editing, You'll see our panel is right here. We never had to open the scripting tab at all to get it. So that works just how we wanted it to. So what's next? Not altogether useful, but a good foundation for something actually useful, custom Blender operators where we can implement arbitrary behavior in Python. We can do whatever we want in Python. It's gonna be awesome. I can't wait. And text input fields and other controls, those can be a little complicated. So we will dive into how to make that happen. You can have a little text input box, all that stuff. But next video is all about operators. So get excited. So that's all I got for this one. Here's a quick recap of what we went through. We did some background on Blender scripting, operators, and the UI. We added some panels, starting with the simplest possible one. We added a button to the properties panel. We went into the view 3D panel and the video sequencer panel. Maybe I should be saying perspective for these. I'm not sure if they're actually called panels because we're making panels. Anyway, we added the script as an add-on. So that's it. It was a good video. Now, if you like this kind of content, subscribe to Take Back Tech. You heard my spiel, so you know what I'm on about. We're rebuilding things from scratch. We're self-hosting. We're automating things like this in Blender. So if you like those topics, definitely subscribe, and I'll see you for the next one. Thanks.